Me and my brother and our cousin, eleven, ten, and twelve years old at the time. We all used to frequent a neighborhood across from ours called the Acorn Circle. It was a heavily wooded area that only had about three homes at the time. On the southeast side of this neighborhood, there were no homes at all, and was especially a favorite spot of ours to play, since it had a few curiosities about the area. Just to describe the location a bit, this wooded area had a very nice canopy of trees and was somewhat darkened, even in the bright Florida daylight. There was this large mound of eroded dirt that had a patch of sunlight directly coming through the tree canopy. About 15 feet away, there was a very large drainage ditch that was about 5 feet across and 4 feet deep. Somebody, at one time or another, had placed a log across this ditch in order to cross it. On the other side, there was an old VW bug and van that had been there so long, small trees were actually growing up and through them. Further back from this was the scarce remnants of a burned-down house. We rarely explored back further than this due to the ever-increasing darkness, heavy foliage, and swampiness. On the day this sighting occurred, my cousin and myself were playing on the dirt mound with our matchbox cars, while my brother explored just a short distance away to the left of us and the Volkswagens. Suddenly, we were jolted to the sound of a loud crack as if somebody had stepped on a stick. We immediately looked to the direction of the Volkswagens where the sound had come from. There, approximately ten feet to the right of them, was a large human-like figure. I roughly estimate that it was around seven feet tall. Its color was not really distinguishable due to the poor lighting. Its right side was slightly obscured by some small trees on the bank of the ditch. We stared at it for roughly a minute or so, then began conversing with each other, wondering who or what this thing was that was just standing there watching us. I remember one of us supposing it was a bear standing up, but that was quickly batted down, since its shoulders were clearly visible. It simply looked like a large hairy man. None of us recall seeing a face or any other clear details, considering that all that was really visible was a jagged, hairy silhouette against the dimly lit woods. At one point, I remember saying, I bet it's Bobby, an older teenager that lived in that neighborhood trying to scare us. So I shouted, Hey Bobby, stop playing around. We know it's you. But no response. Then one of us yelled out, Okay, you can come out now. Stop trying to scare us, whoever you are. Again, no response. As we continued to stare, it slowly moved slightly to its left, fully exposing itself from behind that small clump of trees. As it moved, it raised its left hand up and outwards in order to grab a tree branch, while at the same time leaning forward as if to get a better look at us. My brother said that when it did this, from that particular angle, he could see long hair dangling off its arm. At this point, we all ran as fast as we could, and we have never returned to that spot ever since that day. This was back in August of 1981, near a wooded area in Sarasota. This occurred in Northport, Florida, back in the summertime of 1999. My wife and I are sleeping, and about 2 a.m., we both woke up, heard something outside the window. We were living at the time on the backside of the Miyaka State Park. This area of the state park is very desolate, very isolated. Besides your regular wild animals, the only other thing that would be walking around would be your Florida marijuana grower in the swamps out here. My wife and I have lived in Florida for well over 30 years and are both avid outdoor types. I hung out in these woods in this area for well over 20 years 
and thought I had heard everything. My wife also. Well, anyway, when we woke up and heard something out on the window, we had a very strong odor of something coming through. My wife and I looked at each other, with looks on our face, with wonder. We both said it at the same time. What's out there? And right as we said that, this thing shrieked an almost human-sounding cry, but a real wild shriek. I was going to send our lab and Pitbull after it, but we could not get them out of our room. They'd never been scared of anything. Then, I went to check on our little girl. She slept through it. When this thing screamed in our window, to reach the window from the outside, it would have had to have been at least seven feet tall. We did not dare go outside, especially since our dogs wanted no part of whatever it was. Also, this is a second story from a lifelong Florida native. He said one night, his younger son woke him up, said something was at his window. He told him he's just dreaming. A few minutes later, his son said again, Dad, something is at the window. He couldn't believe his son because his house sits up very high off the ground on blocks for the rainy season that we have here in Florida. This particular area floods very easily. He told me he went into the area in his son's room and could see on the window something left its breath on the window. It was winter, so he did see some condensation on the window, which sits about seven to eight feet off the ground. The dad went and grabbed his shotgun, ran outside with his three hunting dogs. He said, something very large, standing upright, with a very strong odor, ran off to the back side of his property, into a very thick, swampy area. He did not shoot at it, because he wasn't sure what it was. He told me his hunting dogs were under the house, and it took him a few hours to get his hunting dogs to come out from under the house. This area is on the other side, near Miyaka State Park. The directions to this location is out east on Fruitville Road. Go to the end, turn right, and go a few miles. The back entrance to the park is just a few turns in the road. Also, he said it made a wild shrieking sound also, and this area is pretty much just swamp. He said it was around the early 1980s. He too was an avid hunter, and never in his life saw anything like it. Also, he said his dogs have never gone to the area that this thing ran off to, ever again. This individual believes they saw a skunk ape. On the night of September 9th, 2014, she was driving from Sarasota, east on Highway 72, towards Arcadia, around 8.30 p.m. The sun had set that night at 7.21. It was still twilight. Highway 72 in this area is an undivided two-lane road. No streetlights are present and passes through the Miyaka River State Park, woods and swamp. Google Earth simply will reveal a lot. Just after crossing over Horse Creek, this individual caught movement to the right, south of the road. She began to slow down because she caught a glimpse of a deer. As the car got closer, she no longer saw the deer, but a Bigfoot. The Bigfoot was not deer colored, which was what she initially noticed when she first slowed down, but black instead, bipedal, and much larger. She is not sure where the deer ran to, but the Bigfoot took her attention and proceeded across the road in front of her. The Bigfoot turned and looked at her as it ran less than 15 feet in front of her car and crossed in a two-step like leap, moving right to left. It seemed to duck into the scrub once it was across. If she had not stepped hard on the brakes, she felt she would have hit it. She said that the Bigfoot seemed to run in front of her, purposefully, as if it were playing chicken. She did not see the deer again, stating that it was a completely different color, shape, and size than the Bigfoot, 
and she had no doubt that she saw that too. She described the Bigfoot as having black, shaggy hair, and emphasized, shaggy, not fluffy. It was like a dog. She told me it was huge, a comment she made several times. I can't figure out how they stay hidden when they are so large. So I asked her how tall she thought it was, and admitted not being good at guessing, but her father is 6'5", and it was much taller than him. She went on to describe the shoulders as being as wide as my mama's dodge. She described the face as very human-looking, with tan-colored leathery skin, a very flat nose, and dark eyes. She drove 20 yards or so past it and pulled off the road. She got out of her car, heard nothing, but smelt a strong, musky swamp odor. She called several of her own children and told them what she had just witnessed. Several days later, I met her at home, met her children. Her son commented how she called them that night, telling them what she had seen. I questioned her on getting her out of her car. I have never spoken to a witness that showed such courage. She said she didn't think about it and didn't feel fear immediately. She was just so shocked to have seen something that wasn't real. She didn't consider the danger until a few moments later when she looked down, noticed a stick that could have been a snake. She admitted to being frightened of snakes, and that is what made her realize she should leave. She admitted that after thinking about it, apprehensiveness set in, and she had not driven that road since. She was even a bit nervous to return with me. I brought a book with pictures of dog breeds, as she couldn't think of the type of dog that had the similar fur. She scanned through the book and pointed to a golden retriever. The fur was like this, this length, but black. The witness and I then drove to the location. She repeated her encounter to me, reiterated that it really seemed to her as if the Bigfoot purposefully left in front of her car when it did not have to. As we drove to the location, she kept saying how huge it was, claimed to know that it was a Bigfoot the moment she saw it. She admitted to not believing they were real creatures prior to seeing it. She admitted to not knowing very much about Sasquatch and asked more questions than any witness I have ever interviewed. There are cow pastures and orange grove in the immediate area. There have also been many other skunk ape sightings around the same area. This was another individual who was driving to work in the dark at about 5.15 a.m. on a Tuesday morning. He was southbound on Markham Woods Road, nearing State Road 434. He was passing a church on the left when he noticed what he thought was an upended couch that somebody had dumped on the other side of the road. As he neared it, he realized that it was actually a hairy figure that was squatting, and it suddenly stood up facing him. He passed it so closely, his mirror almost hit it. It never tried to step aside as he approached. He checked the rearview mirror once, he passed it, and the figure was no longer there. When he passed in the car, he was only able to see the chest, arm through his closed window. The witness is tall, about 6'4", and can stand near his truck with his head reaching the window. The figure he witnessed was indeed much taller than him, as the arm and chest were only visible. The witness states that it clearly wasn't a bear, and at the time he thought, but Bigfoot doesn't exist. Its hair seemed about six inches long and was mixed brown with some white in color. It was muscular, and the chest was very wide. The area isn't an area you would expect to see a Bigfoot, until you look at a satellite photo of the area. It's heavily wooded, and the homes are set apart and amongst the woods. The little river that runs parallel to the road, just a few hundred feet away from it, is on the other side of I-4. This river flows out of a buffer conservation area, which has also been subject to many sightings. The church and the rest area near the sightings have dumpsters. From the witness's description, it seemed the creature was heading towards the river.